still using all the same four equations right here. The Pythagorean, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, x is r sine theta, y is x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta, and y over x equals tangent theta. And these all come from basically Soka Toa, if you know how to draw it in your triangle. So we're going to go rectangular. to polar form. So first one, we'll do 0, comma, 3. And this is in polar. So we want to get the rectangular form of this point. So I recommend first thing, graph. So graph this out. Wait. What's wrong? Which polar? Oh, no, nothing's wrong. All right, we're going rectangular to polar. Yeah, I thought we were going the wrong way. All right, so we did not go this way so far. All right, 0, 3 is easy to graph. It's, these are all rectangular points, so they should be very straightforward to graph them. So some of these, you can just say what they are, just right off the graph in polars. So on this one, our radius is 3, and our angle is 0. Don't go anywhere. So you're already on the positive x-axis. So this one is 3 radius, 0 for the angle. Now let's say you had trouble seeing that. You can always go r squared equals x squared plus y squared. The radius is generally the easiest to get. And we're usually going to go positive for the radius, unless one of the web work questions says give me a negative radius. So we're going to go 3 squared plus 0 squared square root, which is square root 3 squared, or 3. So there's a radius of 3. You also could look at the graph. Because you went right down the x-axis, it was pretty obvious the radius was 3. Now the angle, that's a little bit more tricky. If you look at the graph, the angle should be obvious. But if the angle is not obvious, how do you get the angle? You could do the uh, <coughs> x equals r sine theta, y equals r cos theta. But the better way to do it is just use a tangent. So tangent theta equals y over x. What is the range of tangent inverse? I'll give you a hint. It's an open interval. That is correct. So the graph looked like this right here. It's a really rough sketch, but the graph basically looked like that. That was tangent inverse. And the biggest and smallest, you actually could even hit negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. You can get close to them, but you can't actually hit them. So let's get that graph out of here. So the range of tangent inverse, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. What that means is, if you use tangent inverse, your angle has to be somewhere between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Obviously, that excludes the, anything on the y-axis and anything on the quadrant 2 or 3, anything on the left. So if you use tangent inverse, you have to know that sometimes you might be out of the range of tangent inverse. So that's why I'm not going to spend uh, a huge amount of time using this tangent inverse right here. Because sometimes you're going to basically have to add a pi to it to get into the quadrant you need to be in. Uh, because of that, let's focus on this one right here instead. So let's sort of forget about we have a problem where we don't get the full range. So let's just look at a tangent inverse, or tangent equals y over x. So our y is 
0 and our x is 3. All right, so a tangent theta equals 0, that means theta equals 0. All right, so this one was not so bad. You could really just get it right off the graph. We'll do our next problem. So graph this, you can get the radius definitely, and do your best to get the angle. So any questions on the graph or the radius? Those should be the two easier parts of this problem. So just go left to, up to. If you have good geometrical sense, you probably know the angle already, right off the graph. Uh, the radius is just always square root x squared plus y squared. I didn't bother putting negative 2 squared because negative 2 squared I know is positive 2 squared. So that negative is going to get squared out. I don't want to mess up and accidentally square a negative to be another negative. So I don't even bother. If I know I'm squaring things, I don't even bother writing the negative sign. So all that is very straightforward. Now we're going to look at the angle. So if you have good geometrical sense, you know this angle is halfway into quadrant 2. So it's going to be 3 pi over 4. Now if you don't know that, I use the tangent equals y over x, negative two, uh, 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. Now, negative 1, that's not, you could write as negative 1 over 1, but those are not sides, or points, coordinates of point on the unit circle. That's way too big. The point on the unit circle that we know about uses 1 over square root 2 for the x and the y coordinates. And we just have to be careful which one is negative. Actually, I think I messed this up. Should be positive x, nope, it was right before. Yeah, the x is negative, y is positive. So this is the point on the, if I drew the unit circle and actually figured out this point right here, I would have negative one over square root two, one over square root two. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm just relating it back to exact coordinates on the unit circle. Some of you are looking at me yeah, the y, yeah, isn't tangent y over x? And so, would the bottom be negative? y over x, yes. There we go. So, can it be the denominator here? Uh, it can be, anytime your x is negative. Basically, if you're on the left half of the unit circle, either quadrant 2 or 3. Denominator, but so that's our y coordinate down there. That's positive. Wow, jeez. Oh, you, you tried to fix it earlier, you were right. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, this is how it should be. Okay. Unfortunately, they're equal. So in this case, the wrong answer is right, also. Uh, and this problem is there's another point right down here that has the exact same tangent value. That's really the problem. All right, are the, the negatives in the right place now? Okay. So I think I said the angle. I didn't write it down. This is pi 3 pi over 4. So there's our angle. Now my general rules for conversions are give me a positive radius and I'm pretty lenient on the angle. I'll go anywhere from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. So whichever way you want to measure it, as long as you're not being silly and going like two extra laps, that's fine with me. So all of my rectangular polar, I want r to be always greater than or equal to 0. And your theta to be between negative 2 pi, positive 2 pi. And don't use negative 2 pi, use 0 instead. Don't use positive 2 pi, use 0 instead. If you need that as your angle. So those are the restrictions I'm going to put on your uh, midterm or quiz. So we're going to do this conversion, rectangular to polar. This one's a little tricky because there's a square root 3 in there. So you can do your best to graph it. What quadrant are we in for sure? Third quadrant. Everybody's negative. So if this is 4 to the left. What in the world is square root 3? Square root 3 we saw before is close to 1.7. So it's going to be certainly bigger than 1. So we're going down further than we went over. So that'll be good enough for us. So your radius is going to be a little tricky. Make sure you square things correctly, add them up. And then do your best to find the angle.
Any radius questions? Just make sure you got square the four and the square root three. So you got four squared times regular three. And you never actually have to square four to get the, I just factored out four squared. Because algebra is way more fun than arithmetic. So I do a lot more algebra. All right, so no questions on radius eight. Now, for the angle, this angle is a little bit tricky. I know for sure we're in quadrant three, so I'm going to leave the two negatives in the numerator and denominator. So I just canceled the fours out. There's no side on the unit circle that has four anything. That's four times too big than the biggest value. So the fours will cancel. Now. Negative square root 3 over negative 1. If that still doesn't ring a bell, I, can do, I know square root 3 is almost the side if I cut it in half. So I just cut square root 3 in half, and I have to be fair, and cut negative 1 in half too. So we get the exact same fraction. So I'm just taking the square root 3 over 1 and turning it into a ratio of sides that I do know about right here. So if there's a square root 3 in it, it's going to be square root 3 over 2 and 1 half, either order, positive or negative. You just have to be smart about what quadrant you're in. You know, quadrant 1 and 3, you're going to get uh, both positive or both negative, but either way, they're going to cancel out to positive. And then 2 and 4, there'll be one negative, one positive side. And you just have to know y over x, and in this case, our y was bigger than our x. All right, what angle, so we're in third quadrant, what angle has these uh, coordinates on the inner circle. Almost. 4 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 would be this guy right here, but we want to go 4 pi over 3. Uh, a good way to think about this, if we zoom in a little bit on the unit circle, this one is basically pi over 6. That's the smallest angle that we really use. And so that leaves the reference angle right here to be regular pi over 3. And then going to here is obviously 3 pi over 3. So however you want to break your unit circle down and measure it, there, well, there's plenty of wrong ways to do it, but there's lots of right ways as well. So this way, you know, if you, oh, I know that's pi over 6, which leaves the rest of that's pi over 3, and then I'm doing another 3 pi over 3 to get there. So this works better for you. Go for it. If you're a memorizer and you got every, some of you already knew right away, tangent theta is square root 3. There's two, basically two answers for that. If you have things memorized, you get, so we obviously get 4 pi over 3. The other one would be 2 pi over 3. So if you're a memorizer, you would know those two answers, right? No, that's not right. It would be regular pi over 3. So 4 pi over 3 and pi over 3 are the two answers for tangent equals square root 3. So however you like to get there is up to you. It's not a bad idea to draw out a full unit circle the, on the first piece of paper I give you on your midterm. If you like to have all that information out there, you could probably practice that, get that down to two minutes or less with no mistakes. Draw your full unit circle real quick. That can help you out. I'm going to pick an angle off your unit circle. I'm not going to pick some crazy pi over 7 or something like that. It's going to be pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, or some multiple. It's not going to be a crazy angle. So all we did so far is talk about points. We obviously went from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. And we started with the polar point, got a rectangular point, started with a rectangular point turned into a polar point. So this is all points. So what we're going to do now is we're going to graph equations. And of course, we're going to graph equations that are in polar coordinates because we're in the polar coordinates section. And we're going to do this by converting 
two rectangular coordinates. So this note is to warn you Points convert to points, equations convert to equations. One of the most common mistakes I see is students take an equation and turn it into a point in the other coordinate system, or take a point and turn it into some equation. So you want to be careful, whatever you start with, you should end up with the same type. So you start with points, end with points, start with equation, you better end with an equation, not a point. So we're going to just go uh, using examples. Convert and graph r equals 6 cos theta. All right, so I said convert. What coordinate system are we in at the moment? Give you a hint, there's an r and a theta. Narrows it down. Polar. So we're in polar. We have to convert to rectangular, x's and y's. So we'll write down our equations right here, our conversion equations. And these can be very useful because sometimes they float out of your mind when you're worried about you're answering your test questions. These are not on your cheat sheet. They're, in my opinion, straightforward. Straightforward enough, you could generate them in 30 seconds or less if you need to. Which one do I obviously need to use? So I need the one with the cosine theta. I got a cosine theta. So I definitely need x equals r cos theta. What is wrong with 6 cos theta, or what's missing? I can't just say what I have underlined equals x. That's what I'd assume r is 6. I was just looking at this. r could be 6 for a certain theta value, but it's certainly not always going to be 6. Most of the time, it's not 6. So over here, I need an extra r. Well, I should really just underline cos theta. Oh, I'll just put one in there, r cos theta. Now, that's an illegal move if I just leave it r equals. How do I legally get this r right there? What algebra move do I make? So, and what operation am I doing to both sides? Multiplying by r. So I need an extra r times r on the right, so I better multiply by an extra r on the left side or else I'm not doing algebra. I'm doing creative math. That's not even math. I'm just writing symbols down. All right, so now I got my r cos theta. So this whole thing I underlined, that is x. r cos theta is x. What about the left side, r squared? It should be obvious which equation to use. Hint, it doesn't have thetas in it. So r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So I have an r squared. 
So here I'm using r, oops, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So we still have a problem of what type of graph does this have? Let's do some algebra. I'm going to complete the square. Have I talked about completing the square this quarter? All right, complete the square. All right, over here on the right side. So to complete the square, anytime you have x squared plus bx, you can rewrite that as x plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. That is completing the square. Why does it work? I'm going to FOIL x plus b over 2 across itself. So that's x squared plus b over 2x plus b over 2x plus b over 2 squared. So that's FOILed out. And then the minus b over 2 squared I'm bringing down. So b over 2x plus b over 2x, that is just bx. And the reason we subtracted b over 2 squared is so it would cancel the positive, the plus b over 2 squared. So that is the completed square right there. So this should have been part of probably algebra 2 or so, somewhere around there. Uh, you may have seen it written slightly differently. Maybe something like that, but either way, it's the same, same process. All right, why did I do complete the square? What is useful about this last form right here? What type, what type of graph does this have? It's a graph of a circle. It's a graph of a circle in standard form. It started out, I think, somewhere close to general form, which for circles is pretty useless. Doesn't really tell you much information other than, hey, you have a circle. Uh, standard form tells you, so first of all, what's the radius? So radius is 30. Better not write r equals 3. Uh, circle radius is 3. What about center? It's correct, 3, 0. So at center, 3, 0, radius 3. We can go ahead and graph that circle out. It's easy to do. So center is 3, 0. So there's the center. And radius is 3. So we're going to go right 3, left 3, up 3, down 3. I like to get these four points on the circle and then do my best to connect them with a smooth circle. So not a unit circle, also not centered at the origin. I didn't really want to write r equals 3 because that r, if I look at r equals 3, I think of the actual polar r. And that circle r equals 3 would, be, would look like that right there. It would be uh, radius is always 3. So that's not the circle that I wanted to draw. So I didn't, I didn't just write r equals 3. I wrote out radius is 3. All right, circle standard form.
there's the standard circle form right there. Now you've graphed lots of lines before. So if I write y equals mx plus b, this is a line standard form. They have some other name for it, but this is basically a line. What other shapes can you get for graphs? Oop. What type of line is not covered by that? What type of line doesn't have a slope or has an undefined slope? So it'll look like, what was that? Where you've got an x cross without a y cross. Yep. So, well, in this case, you can have a zero slope, which is a flat line, but you can't have an infinite slope, which would be a vertical line. So a vertical line, so I should write non-vert. A vertical line is x equals some number. We'll go with uh, x equals a. That's a vertical line. So we've got regular line, not vertical, and then vertical line doesn't fit in that form because it has an undefined slope. I don't think you'll get parabolas overall, but just in case you know how to draw graph parabolas. is already rectangular. There wouldn't be very much work to do. Convert to polar. <coughs> now we're not going to bother graphing this. The graph will be a little bit ugly, but we can convert to polar. So we got 4 times x times y equals 9. So let's look at our four equations here. Is there any x squareds plus y squareds? So that's out. There is an x and a y, and I can use the second and third equations to take care of the x and the y. And there's no y divided by x, there's y times x, so that last one is not going to be very useful either. So we're going to use the x equals and the y equals. So x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta, and there's really not much to do here. You could solve for r squared if you want to, but it's going to have a plus or minus, so that's about all we need to do to convert. So are we in polar or rectangular coordinates? Are there x's and or y's? Or are there r's and or thetas? R's and, there's no thetas, but there's an r. So we're in polar. So I want to convert to rectangular. Unfortunately, in this one, I don't have right away, let's see. I can almost use the first one, but I don't have r squared. So let's see how to use r, how to get r squared. How did we get r squared before? We multiply, or, yeah, multiply both sides by r. But now I have this single r over here by itself. And there's not a good way to take out r just by itself. 
So what's another way I can get r squared? What's another operation I can do to both sides to get r squared, aside from multiplying by r? Yeah, so square both sides. So now I have r squared equals 3 squared. r squared is x squared plus y squared. So this is a circle right here, centered at the origin and radius of 3. So we can graph it very easily. Just draw any circle. When you're done, just label it intersecting at 3s and negative 3s. And that'll be, yep. Uh, I'll post it on Canvas today, uh, relatively soon, but it'll be through some of the polar graphing. Uh, maybe all of it. I just see the exact questions on there.